we have, you know, part of the excitement of Mission Focus for me is that it also highlights uh, all of the ways that you can have an involvement globally in what God is doing throughout this next year. And it's, you know, it's taken us a while to get this going. I really had a burden on a, on a missions level when I came to Harvest, and uh, I think the devil has, has fought that in a lot of ways. But uh, last year, uh, things began falling into place. And, and again, that's why this is a foundational time for you, for your family, to have your kids here. This next year, we will have an opportunity in the month of June uh, to take what I call an all-church missions trip. Not that everybody in the church will go, but there is something for any person in the church to do. And so it will be a pastor's conference, it will be a wives' conference, it will be an evangelistic outreach. We want to have some sports outreach, uh, get some of the kids to come out and do basketball or other sports outreach. Uh, we will be able to have medical clinics uh, uh, going on that time that they were, we were down there. So just all church missions trip. And I'm hoping that we'll have 30, 30 or 40 people even sign up to, uh, to go with that. That'll be to, down to El Salvador. I've been there a number of times now, and, and praise the Lord, it is, a, um, it is a place where the Holy Spirit is working, and it's an opportunity to do a unique thing in another part of the world and with pastors and churches in that place. And uh, so, so it is my thrill today for us to be able to have the pastor that we work with. He's, he's planted a church in San Miguel, and we were there last year in June, and they had, uh, I think, uh, I think it, as a result of, I don't know, a result of us being there or just God was in it, but the Sunday we were there, they had like twice the number of people than they've had. Since that time, it is so grown that they need to uh, find, and they need to add in and find uh, some other um, uh, accommodations. And uh, so we're excited to see what God's going to do. So I want to direct your attention up to the screen because I'd like you to watch a video, and then as soon as that is done, uh, Pastor Romero Claros is going to come up and speak to us.
that was my phone. We're good. Good morning, Harvest. It is a pleasure to be with you this morning uh, for me. And I have enjoyed uh, this year in June, last June, with the team that came to work among us in San Miguel. It was a blessed. And I hope you're ready for the year to 2020. And we had a bus. Uh, we, uh, they rented a bus of uh, 50 seats, but they were not all of them uh, uh, filled up. Not all of them were used. So I'm inviting you to come. I'm inviting you to come to San Miguel and be part of what we're doing. The Lord blessed us this year when the team came. And in fact, this morning, uh, I want to try to uh, describe to you what, what is going on in San Miguel. We started that church 16 months ago. We started August the 5th in 2018. And those... Uh, 16 months, the Lord has blessed us with people. Uh, as Pastor uh, Alan said, when you, your team came, we doubled in people, and we had no, new people coming to the church. And it was a bless. And I hope this year it will happen again the same thing. But uh, there is so much things to say about San Miguel. Uh, the one of you that came, you know that San Miguel is very hot. And you will never have a different weather. It is hot. Hot as you will never uh, believe it, how it is. But it is nice. Very good. But uh, my, my concern this morning is to try to communicate what is going on in the life of our people. And I'm, I'm not preaching this morning. I'm trying to invite you to come. But I'm trying to make clear what we are uh, doing in San Miguel. Uh, one of the problems I can see in San Miguel is that the people has a blur vision. They are not looking well. They are not living as they should. And no matter if you talk to, the, to Christian people, no matter if you talk to non-believers, what you will find is the same conditions you find in the book of Haggai. In fact, I started that church preaching the book of Haggai. And this week, I will have the honor to teach to the Spanish class uh, during the conference. And this is what we will talk about. Is that there is, I can see, seven threats to the vision in the book of Haggai. And I like that little book in the, in the Bible because of two reasons. Because it describes, it describes very well to the Christians and it does also to the non-believers. The reason why people is not looking well, is, and they, are not, they cannot see well, it is because they are uh, doing something that is very dangerous. They, they procrastinate the mission. They postpone the mission. If you talk to a non-believer, they will tell you that they will receive Christ tomorrow, that they will, they will give their life to Christ tomorrow. If you talk to a Christian, and if you talk to them about doing discipleship, or doing missions, they say, not yet. One day, maybe tomorrow. But also people, uh, they, they have priorities that are not the right way. The, the mission is not their priority. The, making disciples is not their priority. If you talk to a non-believer, what you will find is that they say, yeah, I know I need Christ, but I have some other, other priorities in my life. And they will never give their life to Christ. And if you talk to Christians, why they say, yeah, I know the, the mission is, uh, is very important, but I don't have time today. I have some, something else to do. But also people uh, has the, uh, they are uh, having a fight with the problems, the regular, the normal problems in the life. So many people is fighting to have water, food, house. And to have clothes. 
and they are entangled in this kind of life, trying to uh, get all of those things, and they never have time to serve to the Lord. And this is my people in El Salvador, non-believers. They are so busy doing their stuff, they don't want to follow Christ. But also, people have the phobia to live a life of faith. When you tell them that coming to Christ is to live by faith, they don't like it because they want to live something they can touch, something they can see. I gave my life to Christ when I was seven years old. When I got to 16, I was teaching to the, to the youth in the church. When I got to 21 years old, I was preaching already to the church in 2006. We were sent as missionaries to the mountains in Corinto, where I met Pastor Alan when he came the first time. Uh, I was pastoring in, in Corinto. And uh, all of this life, now I'm 41, uh, I have been learning to live by faith. Mission requires you faith. Amen. We moved to San Miguel not even, even knowing where we will live, what we were going to do. But the Lord has been faithful, and we have been serving them. But also, we, we can see that the people, has a, uh, their soul is prostrated. They, they, they are saying, no, I can't. I won't be able to follow Christ. I won't be able to serve him. I cannot. There is nothing special in me. And I believe this is true. But when God comes to us, he empowers us to do it. Amen. Israel was, they had a, a mission to do, but they were, they were put in all kinds of or of excuses to not to do it. And you can see it even in the churches. People with the Holy Spirit in them, the very, Holy, the very same Holy Spirit that resurrected Christ is in you. But people say, I cannot do it. I cannot witness to somebody. I cannot disciple somebody. And they always say, I will do someday. But also people is... is uh, fighting with sin. The reason why people is not giving their life to Christ, it is because, simple because, they love their sin. And the reason why people don't do missions many times is because they are in love with their sin. Because they know that serve to the Lord, to, to do it, you got to live a holy life. Finally, our people don't want to come to Christ because of the precipitation for achieving everything today. They want to have all together, all, all ready, all fixed today. And that's why they say, no, no, I, I will do it. I will do it one day, but I got to fix this, I got to fix that, I got to do this, I got to do that first. But let me tell you this, I believe that what we need is to do it now. In San Miguel, there is a lot of hard, very hard hearts in the city. When you talk to them, they say, oh, you know what? I don't care about your gospel. I don't care about your Bible. And the question I make myself is, is there hope? Is there something we can do? Is there, we can, is there something that we can do to, to see a change in them? Yeah, I believe we can. As the book of Haggai teaches us, what the Lord told to Haggai to do is to go and preach the word. Go and tell them that they are doing wrong, that they need to change. And brothers and sisters, I believe that we, what, what we need to do in San Miguel is continue to do evangelism, is to continue to do discipleship, is to continue to preach, to open the word of God and see the power of the word of God to change the life of people. Yes, San Miguel is very beautiful, very nice. I, I would love you to come. I would love you to see, to see you in June, in the, in, in the month of June, among us. But please, don't come for the beautiful part. Please don't come because it is nice. Please come because our people need Christ. If not, they will spend an eternity at hell. And we will give accounts to the Lord why we did nothing about it. I'm there every week preaching the word of God, 
please come and help us. May God bless all of you. Us will be about sixteen hundred dollars, and uh, we'll have the dates uh, published. Uh, it'll be up on the website or in some of the material that you get this week. And San Miguel is a great place, a city of about six hundred thousand, and and I hope that you will come be be the part of the birth of a new thing, a new movement. Uh, if you are visiting with us this morning, we'd like to connect with you, and we hope you will want to connect with us so that you can discover more about being part of the birth of a new movement. And if you are sitting in either of these middle two sections, there are cards in the back of the seat in front of you, connect cards that you can fill out. If you do that right now, you'll be able to put it in the offering plate as it comes around. Uh, if you don't have access to one of those there, I think there's some probably scattered around different places, or you can also connect with us online. And uh, because we are kind of a unique church in the stand. You've come at a, at a really opportune time because this is the time annually for us to set our focus as a missions-minded church, but we are also a disciple-making church. Now, that, that makes all the difference right there because God's eternal purpose is about what we do as a church but his mission is to take that globally, abroad. And what we do here, and a lot of churches talk about discipleship just kind of in a general sense, but they really have no plan for it. Uh, whereas here at this church, if you would like to learn the Bible, we will pair you up with someone one-on-one -on -one to take you through the Word of God. And you can sign up for that today. You can let us know today, and we'll, we'll, we'll get you paired up over the next couple of three weeks for that. And regardless of what Sunday it is, regardless of whatever else we have going on, when someone completes that process, I like for us to acknowledge it uh, in front of the entire church. So I'm going to ask uh, Priscilla Romo to come up. Priscilla. And this is actually my, happens to be my daughter, Allison, uh, uh, discipled her. And so, Priscilla, I want to give you this certificate for having completed Discipleship One and a gift card to Mardell so you can buy something to keep your growth going. Now I'm going to ask the uh, ushers if they would to come forward. We'll get ready to take our offering this morning before we get back into worship. And as the, uh, you know, as the ushers are coming up, I just want to say I'm, I'm, I am praying that you will be here every night. Tonight through Wednesday night, tonight 5.30, Monday through Wednesday at 6.30 p.m. Uh, for our special guests and to, to get our mentality for the year. Uh, and we like doing it this time of year because then it's uh, kind of like our all-church retreat. It is at a time when the entire body can be with us so the kids are out of school. And uh, we're able to have them, you know, give them an immersive part with us. Uh, both the Harvest Kids, uh, who will be in the sanctuary each night, and then the youth who will be in here with us, challenged on the same level that we are. So I'm going to ask you to ring in your new year with us, with a focus on the mission. Let's don't just be a church. Let's be a movement. Because the mission is a movement. And I'll confess, I've been in a lot of churches that the movement had stopped moving. I do not want us to be that church. And so this, this starts with you to get in on the ground floor, the foundation of a new beginning. Because you will have, if you will come out every night this week, you will have the joy of creating eternal friendships, the privilege of creating eternal hope, the honor of, in, of creating an eternal future. And uh, this, is, this is our investment that we want to make into your life as we start this year. So let's pray as we take up the offering. Father, I thank you today, Lord, for your mercies to us, for bringing us to this spot, to this point in the life of our church that we can really own a missions conference for ourselves. 
Lord, that we can, we can bring in and be challenged by those people who have responded to the call. People, Lord, that are no different than us. Nothing special about them except they said yes. Except they said they want to be all in in what God is doing across this planet. And Lord, we want to support that. We want to be part of that. Father, I pray that you would bless this offering. I ask that you would multiply it many times over in your use through this conference, through other things that we do, through everything we do with our kids. God, none of that would go on without the faithful giving of your people. So Lord, I pray that you'd bless them to bless what you are doing through this body. And Lord, we ask that you would give us now. Lord, please, sir. Anoint our minds and anoint our mouths to give appropriate praise to you because Jesus is so worthy. We ask it in his precious and powerful name. Amen.